Fraction. Uh, Fraction is an institutional secure key management system developed by MPCH Labs that provides sovereignty and accessibility to digital assets through multi-party computation. Today I want to talk about the next generation of crypto wallets, specifically in light of recent advancements in the areas of MPC and as you've probably heard a lot about today, account abstraction. I first came across account abstraction uh, at DevCon, uh, I believe that was October, uh, where there was about two panel discussions, uh, one from the Ethereum Foundation sort of highlighting this new technology, uh, despite it being around since double-digit EIPs. Uh, it was, you know, something that seemed like it was gaining traction. I'd asked a question uh, during the EF panel. I said, what does this mean for MPC? I had just joined an MPC company, and they said, not sure if it would be necessary. Uh, so it became something I looked into pretty hard, uh, really wanted to get a full width, and as I'll explain later, it's not a MPC versus account abstraction or smart wallets, but a combination of the two. Yeah, so before we start, uh, we kind of need to know where we are before where we're going. Uh, and sort of where we are, or before the other day, uh, was EOAs, extrinsically owned accounts. Uh, these are the accounts that you'd use for really any wallet. Uh, 12, 24 word seed phrase uh, that you know, you've learned to love or you know, stress out about every once in a while. Uh, EOAs have been around just about as long as crypto has and uh, you know, they really embody the idea of sovereignty that came around with crypto. As I'm sure is printed on many wallet shirts here at the conference, not your keys, not your crypto, that's really rung true on the EOA stage. Yet, despite the evolution of what crypto's become, this move towards this new idea called Web3 that seems to be permeating into smart contracts and Ethereum, we really haven't seen any advancements in wallets up until recently, especially just relying on the same system of seed phrases. With Web3, we're not just holding, we are using a wallet as an identity. We are you know, showing off NFTs. This isn't just a ledger that you're gonna put under your mattress to forget about. This is your access to a new internet, an access that you previously wouldn't have had, and it would have been just transactions and holding. Advancements have also brought around a lot of uh, mainstream adoption, uh, which has been you know, bringing new users in who might not necessarily be comfortable with the 12-word seed phrase. You're told so often, don't write down your password, you know, keep that safe and secure, use a one pass, but when it comes to seed phrases, it's okay, write it five or six times, put it somewhere, and uh, don't forget it or you lose all of your assets. Uh, for someone who's trying to learn security in a Web 2 sense, this is really at odds. And the security practices of Web 3 need to highlight the security practices that we have in the world today. And then that brings us to MPC. MPC is a keyless solution, and so is account abstraction, sort of changing this way that we have access to wallets. Uh, in short, multi-party computation is a method of cryptography that allows multiple parties to draw conclusions and combine data without revealing inputs. The two main goals of this technology are correctness and privacy. Correctness is ensuring that the outputs produced by the algorithm are correct and as expected. For privacy, it's ensuring that secret data of any party is not leaked to any other party and not visible to anybody else. And rather than diving deep into MPC in itself, I want to highlight sort of advantages that you would have for using an MPC wallet. As there are new options of EOAs, I'd like to just sort of highlight and have you find which one's right for you. For MPC, one of the key points is there's no single point of failure. Multiple signatures are required to execute a transaction that happen off-chain in a second layer of cryptography. You also have adjustable signing schemes. Uh, for institutions in particular, approving quorums you can be modified. Uh, organizations can evolve and maintain the same address and change schemes without having any counterparty risk. You also have programmable access control. Uh, this allows you to assign essentially an unlimited number of transactions to approvers, delegate permissions, and use typical security laws that we see in Web 2 today, such as two-factor authentication, fraud monitoring, and it also preserves privacy. As I stated earlier, this is off-chain, bringing data on-chain. So the signing of transactions 
is handled completely off chain, ensuring that transactions themselves will remain public, but the signing process remains private. And then finally, MPC is blockchain agnostic. The key generation, signing relays, and all the cryptography happens off chain. Stepping in, I would also like to point out, despite working at MPC, there are drawbacks for individuals who are considering using this or institutions looking to use this. The first is off-chain accountability. If you're familiar with DAOs, multi-sigs really take the president and each person signing is reflected on them signing on that transaction. While privacy is an advantage in this, it could also be a double-edged sword. Uh, you don't have this accountability measure of who's signing for transactions, how many people are reaching for this quorum. Compatibility is also an issue. If you're currently using a hardware wallet like a Ledger uh, that uses a seed phrase, there's no real way currently to implement MPC into this technology. Also accessibility, there's few products right now um, that offer it uh, and looking to sort of find competitors or find new features uh, can be tough as it is a new and evolving technology. And then finally, availability. Most MPC products today on the market are focused on institutional investors, not as much on retail. Uh, as it stands today, more work would need to be done on MPC for retail to make this available, not just in features, but in form as well. And the next one I wanna look at is smart accounts. These are smart contract-based wallets, the account abstraction that you've been hearing about throughout the day today and at Wallcom before. Recently, with the ERC-433 standard, uh, now account abstraction is happening functionally at the protocol level. And again, just jumping through briefly, as a keyless solution, there's no single point of failure. You're having these multiple signatures to execute transactions. Again, like MPC, programmable access control, setting time locks, setting policies, creating rewards and automations can all be done natively in this smart contract wallet. Transaction batching, uh, being able to execute multiple transactions at a time to save on gas and to also make complex transactions off buy and sell orders and any other functions that you're using the wallet for. Programmable recovery uh, has been getting a ton of buzz as well. It's the idea of being able to recover funds into a smart contract of itself. Sort of like a dead man switch, you could think of it. Uh, and this sort of idea is that you have a backup key that exists with a couple people and are able to recover funds. And then, in the opposite of MPC, on-chain accountability. As with multi-sigs and as stated before, the system where signing and everything happens on-chain provides this sort of on-chain accountability and the ability to see how signing is happening and how funds are being distributed. On the flip of that, uh, looking at sort of drawbacks to smart accounts, uh, they're blockchain specific. Uh, currently, we have smart accounts for Ethereum. Uh, they're not gonna work for non-EVM compatible. When you're looking and moving towards a multi-chain sort of world, it's difficult to use these technologies and apply them elsewhere as it's standardized and not brought through. Higher fees as well uh, are a current issue. However, they're being solved with L2s DKs and other solutions. Recovery logic, for example, uh, while it is programmable, it does cost to sign each transaction and make that. Similarly, because it's on chain, when you're signing for governance, each signature will require gas as well, which on Ethereum tends to add up. And then briefly, just comparing the three, uh, taking them through just what I said. Yeah, where does this bring us for the future of wallets? How do these keyless systems play in and how do they differ from the world that we have today? The fact of the matter is we really have fundamentally changed the way that we've used crypto, you know, even in just a few years. At first it was just holding and exchanging on Ethereum. Wallets had to evolve as NFTs and new functions came in. Accessing Web3, connecting with dApps. To me, this is just the next step, uh, creating a change at the private key level to create new opportunities and continue to advance the adoption of Web3 and of Ethereum. So where are we going? There are two points that I look at when I think about what's coming next with wallets. It's the idea of having them being differentiated 
and accessible. To start, for differentiated, we need wallets for different users. Currently, everybody is using the same system, uh, unless you're using custodial solutions. And the fact of the matter is, many people still use custodial solutions over wallets because it's easier. Because you can buy in a Binance or a Coinbase, it will go exactly where you have to go, and you could sign in just as you would on any other website. However, setting up these systems, like a kind of abstraction where you can remove that, uh, is helpful in a sense if you're an individual, whereas an MPC solution may be more useful if you're an institution. While programmable recovery on account abstraction and smart accounts is great and requires multiple people to sign, looking to have a system of eight people signing off every time you want to do a DeFi transaction as a single individual may not be ideal. And it's something that, you know, as we move on, we'll continue to see differentiated types of wallets. We're also going to see different wallets for different applications. You could have a wallet that's an EOA wallet that you specifically just hold. A ledger isn't going anywhere. Uh, just having that off-chain system, being able to put it in your bed, that's not going away anytime soon, if at all. Smart contract wallets could be more accessible to Web3 and being able to access and show off through social platforms or other systems such as NFTs. And then finally, I have the idea of self-custody plus that wallets aren't just gonna be here and have the only value add of self-custody. There needs to be something else that differentiates them from others, that sort of plus. Too many times we see that it takes an incident to happen in crypto where everyone starts moving towards self-custody. In the fallout of FTX, uh, Ledger saw all-time high sales. Uh, while Ledgers have been around forever, it was this one instance that made everyone decide, now is the time that I need to self-custody, and now is the time that I need my own wallet. I hope that we can move away from that and see that this is more than just incident specific, but moves better towards what crypto and what Web3 was founded on. And the idea of self-custody plus removes the idea of, oh, I need this just to make sure that my assets are safe from these incidents, but move towards a way that I could better use and store my assets. Secondly, we look at accessibility and the idea that wallets are gonna be moving in the future to be more accessible. Ease of access is a really easy start. The idea of not having to teach someone how to use a seed phrase, not having to go find your seed phrase every time you wanna back up a wallet somewhere else, making this something that the next billion users can come on and comprehend just as easy as signing in on Google. Comprehensive designs as well. I think the idea of using UI um, is incredibly important and powerful. Making sure that it's one or two clicks getting you where you need to go and not just sitting there waiting for a transaction, signing on in your browser, signing on in your wallet. These steps hinder people from actually performing the functions that they want to perform. And having comprehensible designs create a more streamlined environment for more adoption. The idea of open source or open availability is something that I also find incredibly important. I think we're going to be moving towards, uh, as with the kind of abstraction, we recently had the standard published for anyone to build on top of. More companies will be moving, even in the MPC space, to create open source libraries, to create standards for these new securities and these new features. And then open availability more broadly, seeing companies building not just for one, but for many types of users, creating and making different options accessible to have people pick what is the right option for them. And then finally, blockchain agnostic. I think that we've seen a move with Phantom Wallet and others moving towards offering multiple chains. We're gonna be seeing that trend continue on into the future for wallets. The idea of Web3 is an interconnected internet, and the concept of having just limited to one system defeats that purpose. For wallets to really be able to be accessible, they need to be able to access multiple chains and bring people in to the future of Web3. That's all I have, guys. Thank you for coming.